We gaan nu naar uh, uh, Stuart Dins van Verishine. Um, he will talk to us in English. Um, I think quite a few of us will know Verishine from Domain Wire, the research they do into domain name development. Um, you've been doing some research on the registrar sector in uh, Europe. Yes, yeah. And um, well, your, your presentation will be about that. So um, I understand that you'll be sharing some of your results with this community and Absolutely. I hope it will be interesting. Thank you very much. I feel compelled to um, thank people and also apologize to people. First of all, I want to thank Google for finishing on a .com. I like that. Did you see that? ThinkGoogle.com? That was a perfect introduction for me, so thank you. Um, and I also want to apologize. Uh, I haven't written a book. Um, I don't have any really cool videos with uh, cyber criminals freaking out. Although. I must admit, maybe I'm a bit cynical, but I thought that would make a fantastic renewal campaign. I mean, what do you think? We could show that guy freaking out and say how important your domain name is to you. You must keep your domain name. Please renew. I'm, I'm, I don't know where that police guy's going, but I'm sure there's an angle we can work on there somewhere. Um, and also, I need to apologize because, um, as you can maybe tell, I'm not speaking in your local language. So, unfortunately, I'm Scottish, so I'm not really speaking English either. So now's your opportunity to go and get a headset. Okay. <laughs> Uh, my name is Stuart Dennis. I'm the um, Director for Account Management for VeriSign in EMEA. That's Europe, Middle East and Africa. If I'm going to be honest, it's a big E, a big Europe and a very little MIA. Um, we don't have a lot going on in Middle East and Africa at the moment. Our, our business is mainly focused in, in Europe. Uh, and what I want to do is tell you a little bit about... Uh, is this the right presentation? <laughs> okay. Uh, I did have a couple of slides about uh, VeriSign, but uh, they don't appear to be there. Okay, let me just talk to you a little bit about VeriSign then, for those of you who don't know me. Um, VeriSign is most famous for running the .com and .net registries. Um, I, I think that's probably what most people in the room will know, will know us for. We, we also do a host of other uh, value-added services. Um, we do uh, the things like name suggestion, uh, mobile applications. We even do site builders for, for registrars who don't have that capability. Now, what we're not trying to do in any way is encroach into your business or do anything that's going to compete with you. What we're really trying to do is help registrars get a foot up the door, on the, through into the market, and um, help them not only sell domain names, but keep those domain names, get them renewed. I think that's one of the issues that we're seeing more and more. It's uh, keeping that renewal rate up. Now, VeriSign is an American company. I had some great slides, I'm really upset now. Um, and we, but we've, we've got, I think we've got 75 sites across the world. Uh, some of them are Anycast, some of them are, are actual sites. You may not know that we have a, a, our main European site is actually a, a failover data center, and it's in Freiburg, uh, in the middle of Switzerland, very close to Bern. We have about 42 members of staff there, mostly technical guys, um, and we have some sales and marketing and account management there also. Uh, it, it's, it's quite a quite a cool place to work. There's a, a, a data center that goes three stories under the ground, into the mountain, uh, and it's an exact replica of the main .com, .net uh, data centers that we have in the US on the East Coast and the West Coast. And if some catastrophic event was to happen to the US, God forbid, um, everything would fail over to Europe, and it would be the .com and .net would be run out of Europe. And what we're really trying to achieve here is focus a little bit more um, on the European business. I think there's a perception from our registrars, from our channel, that, uh, that VeriSign is very US focused. And I guess the majority of our sales and our revenue is, is based out of the US. But what we're trying to do now is establish a presence in Europe and grow that European presence and, and help our registrars and resellers in the region uh, grow. So I'm going to give you a little bit on the industry at the moment. This is taken from our domain name industry brief that's available uh, on the VeriSign Inc. website. And it just really gives you a taste of what's going on specifically in the domain industry. So this is, this is released in October and it, it reflects quarter two uh, activities. Um, now what we saw is overall we saw 25 million uh, growth on the, the, domain, the global domain name sales, taking the overall domain names to about 240 million. Um, that's, that's a 12% year-over-year growth in total. So, you know, domains are still looking very strong. That's been predominantly pushed by the CCTLDs, which have been at over 18% growth. And um, we've seen about 8% on common net. 
So we're definitely, and we've seen some new players come into the, the, the CCTLD market, and of course, like .tk, uh, and we're seeing some people who had fallen off the, the ladder, if you like, pop back up. .cn have popped back up, and have displaced .eu from number 10 out of the top 10 volume. Earlier this year also, we for the first time started um, releasing our zone information, broken down into common net. So you can go into the, the Verisign website and actually see uh, what's happening with common net. We never did that before, but everyone else did it for us, so we decided we might as well do it as well. Renewals is interesting. I mean, we've just, we've just um, had Google up. That was a fantastic presentation. Uh, and you know, we're, we're seeing a, a general uh, downturn in renewal rates. Um, there's various factors that we believe are affecting this, from research, just from speaking to people. We're definitely seeing a, a depression, a softness in the European market, which we're being told by registrars is a, a knock-on effect from the economics, from the, from the economy here. Um, we are seeing a global turn down in renewal rates from the monetization market. So the secondary market who have high volume portfolios of you know, domain names that are just making a small margin on pay-per-click. Uh, and, that has, and that has been driven at the moment by the Google changes to the algorithms, you know, Penguin and Panda, which is giving these monetization guys a real hard time at the moment. So that, that's what we're seeing at the moment. It means it's reflected to a 1% decrease overall. It might not sound like much, but when you're talking about a base of 120 million domain names, it's a, it's a, it's a large amount. And you know, as the zone gets bigger, the effect of a, a renewal rate drop also increases as well. Now, I always show this slide. One thing I hear when I go to events time and time again is that um, you know, all the good names are gone. You can't get a good .com or a .net. And of course, with, uh, with, with over 100 and I think it's 119, 119, 118 million domain names registered, you're going to be struggling to get a nice gem generic .com or .net domain name. Um, however, that's mainly in the English language. If you're looking at uh, Dutch.com, German.com, French.com, there's a lot of availability. And what we've seen is over the last 12 years, uh, the average length of a .com or .net domain name being registered has stayed very much around the same, between about 9 and 10 characters. That hasn't really changed. So, you know, people are still registering these domain names. Now, what I really wanted to talk about today was the opportunity for everyone in this room, so not just around com or net, but around .nl, around all domain names, and all you guys that are doing hosting. I, I wanted to show you... Uh, I don't want to tell you. There's nothing worse than a registry standing up here telling you how to do your jobs. I really want to help you understand what we found through research and where we think there's huge opportunities in the European market. I'm going to focus mainly on France, Germany, and the UK. And that's because th for, for VeriSign, those are our, our largest markets in terms of volume. So we've done a lot of research in these markets. But I've also done some research in Turkey, and I presented in Turkey two weeks ago, and the findings were surprisingly similar. So what we're seeing is a, a general... Uh, a general perception by small businesses about our industry, and that's what I want to share with you today. So, very simply, the SME market is huge. S by SME, we're looking at 10 to 49 employees. Uh, it's 99% of all European enterprises are SMEs. But I want to focus on what we call the micro enterprises. That's one to nine employees. Now, we're seeing a huge, you know, the, the, most economies I'm going to show you are being driven, the basis of the economy has been driven off of these businesses. Entrepreneurs, doctors, lawyers, um, tradesmen, you name it. These small businesses, maybe one person, maybe two or three. What's quite amazing is that across the board, just over 50% of them have a website, whether it's a one page or whatever, have, have an online presence. And that's where I see the opportunity is. I mean, we're talking millions of businesses that don't have a website and don't know how to get a website, and don't know where to get a website, and that's where I think you guys all come in. So there's a disconnect here. We have over 50% of small businesses, or around about 50% of small businesses, it depends what country you're in, there's slight variations by country, uh, don't have a web presence. But then all the statistics that I'm sure you've seen, and I'm sure Google can, can uh, uh, you know, give this information as well, uh, about 74, 75%, depending again on which country you're in, of consumers over the age of 14 uh, will go online, first of all, if they want to find a business, if they want to find uh, a service, if they want to find a product, first thing they do is go online. And of course, with the, with the explosion of smartphones and mobile devices, what we call the, the, you know, the purchasing on the move is increasing as well. And these are all, every small business that doesn't have a website, I mean, it's obvious, they, they're just not visible. 
people can't find them. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the social media as well. We, we will see that there's some, there's some correlation between lack of websites and the social media where, where, where small businesses use social media and how they use social media. Um, and certainly, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to stand up here and you know, say we have to try and compete with Facebook. Um, Facebook's great. Um, it's only one dot com, so I don't like it from that point of view. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, people use it, and there's there's plenty of ways that we can use what we do to link into that and actually help businesses spread their net a little bit further. So I'm going to split down. As I said, we're going to look at three countries predominantly. I think are more relevant to this audience: so Germany, UK, and France. So, and you're going to see these these stats are going to stay very, very much the same. So micro-enterprises, 91.2% of all companies in Germany are what's classed as micro-enterprises. It's 90% of employees and 6.7% of turnover. Okay? UK, almost a similar picture. Uh, the, the SME market in, in uh, UK in 2011 turned over £606 billion. £606 billion. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge opportunity here. As I said, you'll see the statistics. They stay the same pretty much across all the board. I've seen the same in France as well. Huge amount of companies, a substantial uh, proportion of the business, of the economy of that country, is run by these micro-enterprises who aren't online. So why aren't they online? It seems a pretty obvious, I mean, I don't know. Can I be just, maybe just ask how many, how many people in the room sell, in some way or another, either through resellers or directly sell hosting packages to end users? Okay. Okay. So, you know, almost everyone in this room uh, should be interested in this information. Um, I, I, think this, I, I think the next couple of slides are quite fascinating. So this, all I'm doing here is breaking down into the, the kind of the main types of businesses we're seeing per country. Um, as far as I know, you guys will be getting this presentation. I might, I might give you another one, <laughs> if that's okay. Um, Now, here, as I said, 46% of German businesses, SM, micro enterprises, do not have a website. But 74% of Germans over the age of 14 use browse, probably use Google, to find a website, uh, to find the business that they're looking for, to find that restaurant, that product, whatever it is. It's the first thing they turn to. Now, what I find really interesting is this slide. We, we, did, some, we did a lot of uh, research, obviously. We did quantitative research, but then we did some qualitative research where we sat down and spoke to people. We, we had focus groups, we did all this kind of thing. Now, I automatically assumed that small businesses would turn around and say, okay, I, I'm not online because I, I don't have time, you know, or I, I can't afford it, I don't have the resource, or you know, uh, maybe, maybe even a lack of technical knowledge would be understanding, but the number one, by far reason, is they just don't think it's relevant. They don't see why it's relevant. Well, wh why would I need a website? You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not VeriSign. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not one on one. I'm not Apple. I don't need a website. So, I, I find that really, really surprising. There's just genuinely, and this is across every single country we did this in. We've also done uh, research in the US and around the world. I've, like I said, today I've just stuck to what I think is relevant to your market. But it's universal. Small businesses just don't see the point of having a website. They, they associate that with a bigger business. But, you know, if you need a plumber in a hurry, well, how are you going to find one? I don't think anyone uses the, you know, the yellow pages, the, the phone book anymore. Um, people go online. So one of the things that we have to do as an organization and as, as an industry is help the SMBs and the, the micro enterprises understand the relevance of having a website. Um, the second one's quite interesting as well because as you drill down into what people actually said, unfamiliar with the online environment, that's actually a very nice way of putting it. What we found was a genuine deep dis distrust actually of, of the industry, of registrars, of that people are concerned, people have heard all these horror stories from domain name front running, you know, they're going to they're gonna put their new business name into somebody's website and somebody else is going to register that domain name before they can. Um, that, that came up, genuine fear. Um, things like, um, you know, if you think about what your own website looks like, your own home page, your front page, I mean, everyone here today is from the industry, everyone who's spoken today is from the industry, um, or in the case of the, the cybercrime has a very good understanding of our industry, but you've got to remember that your target audience, your target consumers and SMBs and SMEs, they, they don't understand what all these buzzwords are. They just want a solution, you know? They just want, hey, I just want to get online. 
And they go up and people are talking about domain names, you know. The hostmaster is going to sell you a domain name. They think it sounds like Dungeons and Dragons or something. They, you know, uh, you've, you're then trying to, if maybe if they're going to register a domain name, whether it's a .com or a .nl or a .de, whatever, you know, as they're going through that, that checkout process, things are popping up trying to sell them server space, hosting packages, mobile tools. You know, it's actually quite a scary environment, quite a scary world. And I, I think that one thing that we're all guilty of doing is making, in order to get maximize the real estate of our websites, we're putting too much in there, you know? To get that small business, if that's your target audience, get that small business online. That's the first step. Just get them online. Then you can cross-sell into them, then you can upsell into them. And that's where the, the information that, uh, that Google were providing earlier, I think, comes in really valuable. But the actually not knowing the service provider, not having a budget, not having time, was generally quite far down the list. And I, I don't know about you, but that, that genuinely surprised me. In the UK, I've got a lot more sectors here. It's just because the information was better. <laughs> um, we see a very similar story. Um, Basekit are a, 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 an organization in the UK that, that, that sell um, website builder tools. Um, they're not a registrar of VeriSigns, but they do, I think they're a reseller of, of one of our registrars. Um, so they did a survey with, I think it was 510 um, small businesses in the UK. And they found that 60% of these businesses were yet to go online, 60%. And this is a key concerns that, that, that these people were, you know, in conversations and, and interviews were talking about. I love, I love the second one there. One in four admit they've been jealous of a rival's website. I mean, there's, surely there's something there we can use. You know, people, small businesses are aware that there's websites, they're aware that their rivals have websites, but they, they, they still can't really figure out how to do it themselves. They've tried, they get scared, they don't see the relevancy. You know, there's a lot more we can do to make it a less, frightening environment, make it easier for these guys to get online, you know. Um, by the way, I'm going to ask if there's any questions at the end, but I really encourage you if you, you know, if there's any questions on specific uh, information or statistics that I'm putting up, please just ask. Okay. And again, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of bad experiences. People, you know, I, I, we, I did a, an event last week in London, uh, and uh, VeriSign was there under the guise of .NET. So we're just promoting .NET and trying to help small businesses get online. It was a startup show. Um, and, you know, I was just amazed at, at the lack of knowledge for small businesses. I mean, you, you're talking to people who are highly intelligent, highly motivated, have got some fantastic business ideas, and you go, oh, wow, that's, you know, they've, they've even got a business name, they've got a product name. It's like, oh, have you registered a website? Have you, have you registered a domain name? No. How do I do that? I went, well, go and speak to these guys. It's like £6.99. And they're going, what, what a, a, what, a month, a week? I went, no, it's £6.99 for a year. People don't realize how simple it is to register a domain name. They don't realize how, how cheap it is to register a domain name. I mean, uh, and again, for common net, are probably more expensive than the majority of the, the local CCTLDs that you guys are dealing, in, dealing with as well. Um, there's just not awareness there. So people were coming and they were asking, okay, what's .NET? So we're explaining what .NET, .NET was and giving advice. Okay, so... Um, so what, I just register this name and, and, and it's mine and it's there, what, what, what do I do with it? Well, you need, to, you need to get a website, you need to go and get a hosting package. What's hosting? So the, the knowledge, the, the level of knowledge is very, very low. We can't assume just because somebody's smart enough to create their own business that they understand our industry. <laughs> one, of the, one of the ones I like the most, we, we, were, we were promoting a, a, a product, it's a, it's a free value ad we give away to our registrar, it's called MobileView, and it helps a website become mobile. It's very simple, works very well, but you know, it's just designed to be, make the product more sticky. Um, so we did a presentation, and a lot of people were interested in this product, and they came, you know, they came over, and a couple of them were speaking to us, and they said, right, I really want this, I want this mobile view. I, 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 want, people, I, want, I, want, peop I want to be able to get this website on my phone. I said, okay, well, you need to register a domain name and, and get a website on there, and you get mobile view for free. Oh, I, I don't want a domain name, I don't want a website, I just want the mobile view. You know, I, just, I just want that, because it's free, I just want that. Okay, right, come and sit down, I'll explain how it works. So, you know, it's, I think it's difficult because I know what it's like. I know it's easy for me to stand here and talk about this, and I know that you have a very, very, very tight margin. You have a very finite time with that customer. But the, the thing that came up again and again and again was a lack of trust, a lack of trust from anyone that's trying to sell them a, a website or an online product. They have fears that some web designer is going to charge them thousands of pounds, thousands of euros to set up a, you know, a website. 
Um, they're, they're genuinely amazed at the, tool, the tools out there that you guys provide that can affect, you know, they can set a website up themselves through templates. They're genuinely amazed that they can get a nice online presence for a few euros, a few pounds. So, you know, where, where, we've, seen, where we've seen registrars do very, very well in their industry is where they've taken the time to understand the individual customer. Now, again, I appreciate that if you're making a, a euro margin or a 50 cents margin, that's not so easy to do. But where we're seeing the registrars with the most success and where their customers are coming back and open to upsell, open to cross-sell, expanding their business with them, is where you know they've taken time at the start to understand what the customer's business is, what it is they're trying to achieve, and give them the appropriate solution. Because as soon as that trust is built up, then if you then email them and say, hey guys, what about this? Do you want to try this? Or we think this is right for you. Or we think you should read, you know, you've got your .de, well, why don't register your .com, your .net, your .nl, protect your brand. Once that relationship is established, that the customer's far, far more open to the upsell opportunity. And that's when you get a customer that's going to, their, life, their lifetime with you is going to increase, and their, their spend with you is going to increase. But what we're finding is, um, I'm, can I ask a question? Do any of you um, measure the kind of the click-through on your website? You know, so how many people land on your home page? How many people start the process of clicking through into a transaction and then drop out? Because we, we've done some research on that as well, um, where, where you know, people are clicking on banner ads, they're being sent to a website, they go to a landing page, then you know, there's about 15 steps before they get to where they want to be, and, and people just drop off. They drop off part of the way through this process. So again and again and again it comes up. You know, how can we simplify things? Look at your checkout, look at your purchase flow, look at the way you do this. And is there any ways you can make it simpler to get that person to the end quicker? So at the end of the day, you've got them. You've, you, you've managed to sell them what you want to sell them. And then, as I said, you can do the other stuff later. If you try and do it at the front end, we're seeing that it's turning people off. They're, they're, they're just going elsewhere. French, the France market, sorry, France, French market is uh, almost exactly the same, seen at 49%. And what we did see was, you know, that maybe 34% of small businesses had a some kind of website, one or two pages, and only about 15% of companies had uh, an e-commerce site. So that's something as well, you know, we've got, most of these companies have a product or a service to sell, but even on their websites, you can't buy that product because they haven't done that. They've just set up an info page, a, a yell.com type presence, you know, one or two pages. So again, here's opportunities to get the person online, get them to trust you, and start selling them the e-commerce products that will help them grow their business. But they're very, very reluctant to purchase them when they don't know you because they think, hey, you're just trying to sell me something I don't need, just trying to make money quickly. And again, very, very similar uh, challenges when we spoke to people individually, when we, we did the, the qualitative research with the, the small businesses. You know, they want to have a recommendation. They want to go to someone that can trust them. At the end of the day, you've probably heard this lots of times, but they don't want to know about a domain name, a hosting package, a security package, a, you know, whatever. They don't care if this is the latest technology. They don't care if this is really cool. They just want a solution, you know? They just want, hey, I, I want to get my business online. I want people to come and find my business. And when we start talking about SEO and everything else, they, they suddenly start to withdraw. So we just need to simplify and, and help these people, help them get online. So I wanted to talk about some of the hot topics in the, um, in the industry at the moment. So, you know, social media and mobile is something that, that we hear a lot about, something we've done a lot of research on. So I think this is quite interesting. If you remember back to the, the, Germans, the German pie chart of how many businesses had a website or not, 46% of the small businesses did not have a website, but 47% of them are currently using social media. So we haven't delved deep enough yet to see if that's an exact correlation. Uh, what we are finding is the, the savvy businesses, if we have a look here, if you note the businesses that are actually using social networking, advertising, marketing, PR, sales, comms, market research. So these are, these are savvy businesses anyway. These are businesses that understand the, the, the value of getting their names out there, of getting their brand out there. And we're finding that they're using social networks in a very effective way. Well, again, all these small businesses who haven't got websites, who aren't online, aren't even doing this either. The goals of these companies as well is very, very specific. You know, they know exactly what they want to do, whether it's just raising their company profile, or whether it's uh, you know, brand awareness, or, or whether it is actually going after client, 
getting client acquisitions. You know, they know exactly what they want to do and they know exactly how to do it. So, you know, from us, from our point of view, the, the most we can do with these, these businesses who are already on Facebook or whatever social network it is and are using that is we can encourage them to put a link in there and get back to a, a main website with a landing page where they can get a lot more information. If somebody's interested via social network and interested enough to go on their page and look at what they're doing, they're going to click on a link to go back to a full website. It gives them a more valid presence as well. So because somebody's online with Facebook or whatever network, it doesn't mean they're not still in the market to get a website and get something that looks a little bit more professional. And you can see by far the, the, the social networks in Germany being used, uh, Facebook uh, and Zing. And we're seeing that, you know, there's, uh, we're doing a lot in Turkey at the moment, just purely because Turkey is such an emerging market and it's quite interesting. And uh, Turkey is now the, fa I think it's now the biggest uh, Facebook market in Europe. It's just overtaking the UK, which is just phenomenal. So what we're seeing is that right in the UK, about uh, just over a third of, of businesses, small businesses who are online and are using social networks are using Facebook, or the next one down is the local directory services. Again, these, these do reach people. These do reach local people, but they're not, really giving a, uh, they're not really giving a professional perception to your potential customers. And we still think there's a lot of opportunity there to show these businesses who have gone to the effort to be listed in directories that for literally probably a few pence more, maybe not even, they could get something online that they can control, that gives them a little bit more information, gives our customers more information, and makes them look, as I said, a little bit more credible online. Again, there's just that lack of knowledge, that lack of fear. And, and I guess the question for you guys is, well, you know, how do you reach these people? How do you find them? One of the things that we have been seeing, uh, again, with registrars who have been successful in, in acquiring small businesses as, as customers, is they're being far more targeted. I mean, we talk, even the way I'm talking today, I'm talking about SMEs, I'm talking about you know, micro-enterprises. If we have, if you have a specific target audience in mind, I mean, I, sh I showed you all the different breakdowns earlier. There's, there's, a, there's enough categories out there that probably everyone in this room could pick one and focus on them and all make some money. So focus on it. So do a campaign that's just trying to get hairdressers online. Focus on a campaign that's just going to try and get plumbers online or tradesmen. These are where the opportunities are because you can really target them and, and do messaging that, that, that they can reach out and recognize. I think where we find, um, we've, we've done a lot of work with small registrars this last year where we've uh, helped fund them to do marketing campaigns. Um, and what we're finding is that the more generic the campaign is to try and spread the net a little bit further, the less successful it is, the less return on investment you're seeing. Well, if you specifically target a, a business type, it's much, much easier to, to, to actually attract that business type. You go to the, the press, uh, the magazines, etc., that they use, the websites that they use where they get their products. You know, there's all kinds of ways to target them and, and put out messaging that works just for them. I think there's two, there's two, uh, there's two statistics here that I like. So only 10% of micro companies in France with a website are active in social networking. But 61% of those same social, uh, small, medium businesses use social networks to find information on their market, you know, to find out more. So they're using it, but they don't think to actually be there and, and kind of combine, combine their web presence with their social media presence. So again, it's, it's education, it's information. In terms of mobile browsing, uh, I'm sure you guys have, have seen this a lot. You know, all the statistics are out there. This is specifically in France, where we're seeing the volume of mobile browsing just going through the roof. Uh, everyone, teenagers, have all got smartphones now. They can do everything that you can do, as you know, on your... I thought I was watching earlier, I think it was while the, the police guy was on. Um, he mentioned a, a URL or a website, and I saw a bunch of you checking out online. You know, that's what we do. That's what everyone does now. So, if you see an advert or you see something that interests you, you can actually go online and check it out there and then. And, and that's that's the the environment we're in. However, small businesses. I'll show you. I'll show you another statistic in a minute. But small businesses are not taking advantage of that. Even the ones who are online, even the ones who have websites, are not doing anything to optimize those websites for mobile phone use. And, and that's something that we're going to see. You know, that's coming faster and faster and faster. And especially in the emerging markets, if any of you guys are thinking of, of branching out, branching outside of your local market here, you know, if you look at some of the emerging markets, um, people can't afford an iPad, people can't afford a, a PC, but they can all afford some kind of uh, cheap smartphone and get online. And that's what we're seeing is more and more and more uh, activity 
people on the move, people buying on the move, but yet nobody's really capturing that, apart from the large organizations who are much more switched on to it. So in Germany, we're seeing, what, 200 million in, uh, in 2012 mobile payments, and they believe that's going to go over 400 million by 2015. So that's people, that's purchases online via a mobile phone. There's a huge opportunity there, but again, you need to try and help the small businesses understand that opportunity, get them online, get them using these products. Nine million clients in 2011. Nine million clients shopping online. It's just, it's just huge. And that's just in Germany. Seen the same in the UK. So again, one, less than one in 10 say that their websites are, will work with mobile phones. But yet, 45% of internet users in the UK are using mobile phones to access the internet and buy products. So again, we're seeing all these discrepancies. Now just, I, d I don't want to overstep the mark here. Um, we have a lot of research available. Of course, I would love if you're going to sell a domain name that it's a Comernet or a .nl. Um, we have research available. If you're not a directly VeriSign accredited registrar, you can, go to, you can go to where you buy your .com and .net domain names from and ask them to get research from us to help you. The research is there to help the, the the registrars and the resellers access the opportunity that's there. So at the end of the day, as I said, while I might have a preference of what you would be selling them, I just want to help grow that business. I want to help grow that business and make more awareness. We all have a, a responsibility to help people to be educated and get online properly. So you know, certainly if, you, if you're interested in finding out more about this and we have it globally, then come to speak to me or speak to your, your registrar that you get your domain names from. So, if I can leave you with just a few things. Um, there is a huge, huge market out there for, pe for businesses that need to be online, that want to be online, or in some cases, as I said, don't understand the relevance of being online. And that's, where we, that's, that's the area we need, to, we need to target and grasp. I think that, again, without me trying to tell you what works and what doesn't work, I'm a, we're a registry, we don't have that end user. Uh, interaction. We're definitely far removed from it, sometimes th through multiple levels of resellers, but from the research, from the people that we've spoken to, there's definitely a concern from consumers and end users about the complexity of registrars' websites, about all the different, uh, all the different services, all the different buzzwords that just puts them off. So, you know, my recommendation is, you know, wherever possible can we simplify the process. Mobile phones, mobile phones are a huge opportunity going forward. And we need to, there are plenty of products out there, products you can get off the shelf, products that I'm sure people in this room are smart enough to develop themselves, have their own proprietary products to help their customers' websites work better with a mobile phone, be mobilized. And I know, I know iPhones and everything can show the whole website really well, but unless you've got incredible eyesight, you know, there's, there's, there's key things that you need to pull out, how to contact them, how to find them, you know, it, it, it works very well on all phones to have some kind of device. It also looks nice for the, it looks nice for your customer, and we have proven that the you know having having that mobile access increases the net. It does lead to new business. And uh, yeah, just simplify, please simplify. Has anyone got any questions? I think that's me. I, I, I do apologise. I had some more slides. I think I think I gave you the wrong one. Thanks, Ben. Hey, Stuart. Uh, thanks for a good presentation, first of all. So I think that Stuart really uh, made a very valuable point to all of you hosters and uh, people in this, in this building. Effectively, our large, I work for Two Cows, one of the largest wholesale domain registrars, and our fastest growing customers today include companies who are focusing on giving online presence to SMEs and micro SMEs. And I, effect, I think that you should all be trying to take advantage of, of that uh, potential uh, growth for your businesses. And as we work with a lot of these companies, like Basekit that was mentioned uh, in Stuart's presentation, we can do some valuable introductions for you. Uh, we can also be a good partner partner for you for domain names, so I'm trying to use this as an opportunity <laughs> to pitch. But um, seriously, we can make some great introductions to the likes of Basekit, WebsPlanet, Mono.net. All of these uh, clients of ours specialize in helping uh, you to deliver online presence solutions to the SME and micro SME market. So we have clients who can be the vehicle for, uh, for you to, to engage with that market. Okay, cheers.
Thanks for the pitch, Ben. Um, I have a question. Um, sure. You were, um, uh, it's probably mostly out, outside the scope of your, your presentation, but I was just okay. wondering, uh, what do you think the new, GLT, new GTLDs will do with your business case for um, .com, .net, but maybe also some others? I had, I had three slides on that, but anyway. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's a great question. I mean, w w what I was actually going to show, because I, 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 I assumed that the, the new GTLD stuff would have been talked to death by the time I got on. W what I did have was, um, we did some research, and I, I apologize, it was in the US. We haven't done it in Europe yet. And 900 SMEs were, were interviewed about the new GTLD process. And I was absolutely blown away by the results. Just under 50% knew about it and knew they were coming. I was, I thought it would be like 4% or something. So there was, a, in a, the US anyway, there's a lot of awareness about the GTLDs coming and more than 50%, I think it was about 56, 57%, absolutely wanted to get at least one, you know, but they didn't want to get it to replace their existing online presence. They wanted to get it to, to kind of as a, a complementary, you know, to, to boost their online presence. And f in terms of how it's going to affect us, um, I mean, nobody knows. I mean, VeriSign are uh, going to be, well, we're back-end providers for, I think, 219 of the applications. So, but, you know, there's no guarantee that we are, those applications are going to come through. So, you know, for instance, some of the contested ones, like .web, we're, we're, one of the, we're the back end provider for one of the applications. So I think where we have to look at it, we have to be, we have to be optimistic. It's coming. Um, we are going to be looking at probably in 2014 when they actually start to come out. I think, the, I think Q2 2013 is very optimistic. So we're going to see IDNs come out probably towards the end of this year, and then we're going to start to see the, 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 the more distributed TLDs come out, I guess, into 2014. Um, what VeriSign will do is we will offer marketing funds and support for registrars who want to carry the domain names that we're behind. Um, I think in terms of .com, uh, I absolutely think it's, for com and that, there's a potential issue. I don't think .com is going to go away overnight, but I think especially in countries that are maybe, you know, in the US, Calm is calm, you know, I think it's going to be very difficult to change that position. But of course, in every, every country in Europe where we've, there's CCTLDs that are the preferred choice, like .nl is a perfect example, um, you know, I think .com and .net are going to have their work cut out. I think .net more so. .net's, .net's about 15 million, so it's kind of down there with uh, uh, kind of like .org. And I think what we've seen historically when things like .dot registries like .co have done a really big push. We've actually seen .com sales rise with them. We've very, very close cor cor correlation, easy for me to say. Uh, and, but we tend to see .net dip. So, you know, we don't know is the end, and we don't, we don't know what's going to really capture people's imagination. Um, I think it's definitely interesting for all of us. It's, you know, no matter what, it's going to be a change of landscape, so. Anyone else? Arthur. Hi, Stuart. Hi. Um, a question for you. How, how expensive is it currently for VeriSign? Um, talking to, uh, I talked about DNSSEC today and about the DDoS attacks using name servers. Um, of course, we all noticed, or some of us noticed, the dot com price increases in the last uh, couple of years. And um, now, with the bid, the bid coming up for 10 years for the renewal of the dot com registry. Uh, six years. Yeah. Um, so are, the, are all those price increases that are also planned really necessary? Or do you really have to because you feel threatened by, uh, threatened by, by, by the DDoS and by the, uh, the move towards local uh, well, TLD, uh, TLDs? And, uh, I mean, I don't, th I, don't think, um, I don't think the price, increase, price increases are going to, I don't think they're going to help us in terms of competing, you know, com competition. I think what we're going to see with the new GTLDs is a huge amount of money being th from certain providers, companies, huge amount of money thrown at marketing to try and get these guys the foot in the door. Because the landscape's pretty, I think it's pretty murky for end users as it is. I mean, there's so much choice already. And with another thousand coming online, I mean, you know, of course there's opportunities there for everyone, but I think there's, there's also opportunities for confusing. I am, I'm not deflecting your point, I'm just trying to think of an answer. Um, so. The bottom line is, I don't know. I don't know exactly how price increase correlates with the, the amount of investment we do into the infrastructure. 
I do know I can probably get you some figures on the amount of investment we do. It's a huge, huge amount. Um, we were, I was talking to one of, uh, one of the, the, the registrars earlier about this in terms of the, you know, the bandwidth that's used for the DDoS attacks. I mean, we see it every single day. We have about 80% of the world's comnet internet traffic goes over our systems, and we can see who's doing what where. Uh, and obviously, we have some very large clients, including registries, who we protect. We, we do DDoS mitigation services for. That's just, I'm in naming, which is common net, and that's a different part of the business that I, I really don't have a lot of, of, of dealings with. But you know, I know that these services put a huge load uh, on their systems, and we were trying to work it out. I think at the moment, you know, we're probably using five, ten percent capacity on, on an average day. Um, we have uh, 65 billion queries we process daily. Um, so in the last quarter, quarter two, uh, sorry, quarter three, I think that peaked at about 90 billion in a day. 90 billion queries in a day that we're dealing with. And obviously when there's DDoS attacks and stuff, we see the peaks and troughs. And we never, we never go over sort of 20, 30% capacity, but we keep having to build that out because exactly as, what is it, Moore's Law? You know, we, we've got, so there's a lot, everything's replaced every, with it, you know, every year, everything's replaced. We've got 75 sites around the world. So I don't know what the figure is, but a lot of investment goes into the, the infrastructure. That's the thing that we're most proud of. Uh, we actually, earlier this month, I think it was November the 8th, um, I'm not exactly sure, but that we passed 15 years of uh, .com, .net, 100% uptime. You know, it's not fallen down for a second since VeriSign's been in charge. That's part of the reason we're confident about contract renewals. That's part of the reason we're confident that, that, that you know, it's in safe hands. How exactly an extra 75 cents or something relates to that, I genuinely don't know. So. Uh, so I'm not doubting that you do invest a lot in infrastructure, but you make much more money than you need. Company has too much money. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, question. Okay. Well, it was, well, it wasn't really a question; it was a statement. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> uh, yeah. La last year, I think uh, Verisign turned over 776 million dollars. That was turned over. That's not profit. Um, and of course, yeah. And of course, we have, um, you know, we're a publicly listed company. We have shareholders to, to satisfy. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the question was. Yes, we're in a strong position. I think with .com. I mean, if you look globally, as I said, in this country, we have a very small percentage of the, the TLD market. Uh, but you know, we have a little bit in every country, and obviously, it's very large in America. So, you know, across the world, there's 240 million domains, top line. And we have about 120 million, so we are in a very strong position. But that could be partly because of timing, because of the service that we've provided. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we are we are looking forward. Uh, we are heavily investing, as I said, in the infrastructure, and uh, you know, making. And we do a lot of other services on the side that, that people don't see, you know, other than common net. It, it is in the contract, uh, the ICANN approved contract that we ra can raise the prices four times out of every six years by a maximum of 7%. Um, I mean, honestly, that, that's, that's all I can tell you. I can't tell you any more than that, because I, I don't know. <laughs> any nice questions? No? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, can I have, yeah, thank you. I think that was, that was a very interesting presentation, Shilbert. So sh you could also reply that you spend a lot of money on research. We, um, we do. I mean, I'm and of which you make the, the results available to the public. And that was my question. Um, as, as a registry, you do quite a bit of research. We have seen some results on your marketing studies. Um, <coughs> What, what do you do with your results in relation to your registrars? Do you work together on, for instance, here your main conclusion was it's education, it's information. We have yes. to get the, the message across. Do you actively do that uh, together with your registrars? Do you leave it to them? What is your next step when you find out, when you come to this kind of a conclusion? I, I think at the moment we are very, um, we, ha we take a step back. And, uh, you know, we, we have a, a we have quite a new executive leadership team at VeriSign at the moment, and I, I am seeing potential changes in the way we do things. So I can tell you what we do, and then I can tell you what, where I think we might be going. So yeah, absolutely. We, we invest a lot of money back into the channel through marketing programs, through you know, um, rebates, through camps. So we, we try and give money back to the, to the registrars. 
in that respect. So we have programs where they can actually, we will fund research for them to help them develop, help them grow, and we do that regularly. But then it's difficult for me then to take that research that we've done specifically with one partner and then, and then distribute it out. So what we've, what we've recognized is we have a, 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 like a repository almost of research from the last few years. So we're working with one of our, our key partners, who is Gartner, who does a lot of the, the global research. And we're working with them to try and sanitize it so that we have almost a library of research that we can give out to um, registrars. Now, we always have been quite short-sighted, I think, in, in the terms of we wanted to give it to our registrars, give it to registrars. But we actually, we did an event um, earlier this year with, with Two Cows to actually start to engage with resellers, the next chain down. And, and most of the people in this room, I, I would consider a reseller, even though you are obviously registrars in your own rights, but you're not coming direct to us for, for .com and .net. So what we're trying to do is free up marketing and this kind of information. Everything you saw in that presentation today is publicly available. I, I, I got a PR company to go and find it all. So, but I just want to show you that's what's out there. We've then done specific research as well, which I haven't shared with you today, that we're trying to find out a way to basically get through all the legal loopholes and, and, and distribute that out to our registrars and to our resellers. So there'd be research that wouldn't be publicly available, but it would go, it would go out to the, the kind of, you know, our industry, if you like. So we, whether we would, I don't think we would proactively tell any registrars, any one of our partners, how to go and, and, and market. But what we would do is provide the research, give them advice on what we think would work or what we believe would work. Then they have the opportunity to come to us with proposals for uh, marketing campaigns, which could involve an, an element of education. I mean, we look at, we look at how much money we're going to spend with a registrar. Uh, and we look at their business case, what they think the return on investment is going to be. And if it's not about return on investment, then it might be about, well, long-term brand recognition. Uh, we did a, we're doing a campaign at the moment, actually, called the .NET Growth Program. And it's specifically targeting Africa and Turkey, um, Asia, India, and the kind of what we're, we're seeing as the underdeveloped, underserved areas. Uh, and we're doing some fun giving some small registrars in these regions some really nice resources to offer uh, a .NET domain name for free, with six months worth of hosting, two gigabytes of space, email address, everything for free just to get that business online. But we're making sure that the businesses are where they say they are, so we're having to get, we're having to cross-reference with the, you know, because what we don't want is somebody in the secondary market to come up and get 200 free .NETs, you know? So we're doing a lot to try that, and this is the things that the, you genuinely don't see. We try and do a lot to help with the growth, help with the development. I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to give us all more customers. You know, it's going to give it, get more people online and have more people using our services. So we invest quite heavily into that side of things as well. Um, so we're not really driving it. We're just giving the opportunities for the registrars to come up with the ideas. We're not the innovators. Everyone in this room is the innovators. We're, we're just helping to support that. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>